This afternoon, climate talks in Durban, South Africa, entered their high-level phase. That means negotiations are now happening between more senior officials with more power to cut deals. Attention is turning to efforts to protect the world's forests, which is seen as a key part of fighting climate change. But the strategy so far has yielded mixed results. Brian Edwards Teekert has more. A handful of foreign ministers and heads of state, mostly from the world's more vulnerable nations, are now part of the talks. Here is Sprint Dabwido, the president of Nauru, a small island nation in the Pacific. Already communities in our islands have been forced to flee their homes to escape rising seas. And unless bold action is taken, much of my region could be rendered uninhabitable within our grandchildren's lifetime. The high-level talks opened with speeches by U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and South African President Jacob Zuma. They both called for an extension of the Kyoto Protocol's binding emission cuts for industrialized nations, while the world negotiates a broader agreement in the coming years. Jacob Zuma. The objective would be for the multilateral rules-based system binding on all parties to be implemented by no later than 2020. Many scientific and environmental groups say 2020 will be too late to fend off catastrophic runaway global warming. But that is the earliest date that U.S. negotiators say they might agree to any more ambitious reductions. Frustration with the U.S. position has grown so high here that the largest coalition of environmental groups at the talks has abruptly changed its position on U.S. participation. For years, they have hoped to convince the U.S. government to do more. As of today... They're asking the U.S. to step aside so that the rest of the world can do something about climate change without it. Tim Gore of Oxfam, speaking on behalf of the Climate Action Network. If the U.S. is not come here to negotiate on further action before, not after 2020, then they need to step aside. We can't allow the U.S. intransigence to hold up progress in these talks. We need the Europeans to now boldly step forward to work with China, the emerging economies and the vulnerable countries, those on the front lines of climate change. We need that coalition to come together and to mark out a new path which is going to increase ambition in the years ahead, deeper emission reduction targets and more finance flowing through the Green Climate Fund. And if the U.S. is not willing to be party to that kind of agreement, then they should be left outside. Meanwhile, negotiations are proceeding on parallel tracks over a number of controversial issues. The high-level talks are taking up a draft text for a program meant to control greenhouse gases by conserving forests. It's called Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Degradation, or RED, and this is a measure that has completely split the environmental community. Let's start with someone who is a big fan, Odiga Odiga. He's been a forest campaigner in Nigeria's Cross River State for most of his life. He's currently chair of the state's Forestry Commission. We're bundling 2 million hectares for protection. People like Odiga are already doing RED pilot projects. If RED gets approved, they'll be eligible for retroactive funding. He says the program is a question of simple economics. Right now, the incentives for forest dwellers only point one way. The only time the forest has value is when it's dead, it's wood. So put more value on forest when it is standing than when it is cut down. The people will defend it with their blood. That's how the program is supposed to work. Forest dwellers get money, the forest gets conserved. But critics say the draft language right now is full of loopholes and ambiguities that could encourage much worse projects, like monocrop tree plantations. Dr. Blessing Karumbidza works with Timberwatch, and he's been studying a pilot red project in Tanzania. We have a situation where an origin company, Green Resources, is planting trees, eucalyptus and wattle trees, on a non-deforested land. It's a grassland. It was not deforested. That's a problem for a lot of reasons. Native grasslands absorb greenhouse gases. Newly planted tree plantations are net emitters. Eucalyptus is a foreign species that tends to drain soil of water and nutrients, crowding out native plants. And Karambitsa says the money being paid to people who live in the area isn't enough to compensate them for what's happening. So what then happens at the end of the day is the trees are planted, they are fenced. They are told you cannot access it, it's now private property, and they do not say it's private property. They say to avoid outbreak of fire. You can no longer access this. The talks will decide whether Red winds up looking like this project in Tanzania or the one Odiga is working on in Nigeria. 
Negotiators will seek agreement on a set of safeguards for indigenous rights, definitions of what constitutes a forest, and guidelines for calculating how much greenhouse gases forests absorb. Some environmental groups have no faith that anything good can come of this process. Others are skeptical, but still lobbying for safeguards. Niels Hermann Nannem, with Rainforest Foundation Norway, says one of the most important things is financing. He thinks red could be a good thing if it got public funding, but a terrible thing if it were used in pollution trading. Carbon offsetting is a thing that we presently need to avoid in a red mechanism. One key reason for that is also because the commitments from the rich countries, the developed world, to reduce their own emissions is far, far lower than what we need to avoid dangerous climate change. So then adding red as a mechanism that could substitute emission reductions in the developed countries is not a good idea. Right now the draft language for red is vague and includes some mutually exclusive proposals. But at the end of the week, it could be one of the biggest agreements to come out of these talks. And depending on the language that finally gets approved, Nanam says, that could either be a good thing or a very bad one. Brian Edwards-Tiekert, Free Speech Radio News, Durban, South Africa.